Hey, can you see us? Can you can you see us? Can you see us? I'm trying to see if they can see us Why on the camera. Why do I feel obligated to stand right here? Well, we I don't know. have to stand right here. We can stand right here. <laughs> I hope people can see us. Maybe they can only see like my lips moving or yeah, something. Maybe. Hey, good morning, guys. Welcome to One Church. Good morning. This is the Riverbank Campus. Live. Right. We Never are forget. alive. It's part of being with yeah. Jesus, right? We are not dead. No, we are people that amen. are alive in the spirit. Amen. Yes. Hey, I'm Shelly Traub. I'm married to Pastor Tracy on staff here at One Church. And I am Audrey Godwin. I am the ministry assistant. What, what? Best stop ever here at One Church. That's right. Yeah, I got a woo for that. You got a woo. I got a woo. woo. I got a fan. All right. Tell our friends how to connect. Hey, yeah. So a couple ways that you guys can connect with us and we can connect with you is if you're joining us online by downloading the One Church app or going to onechurch.com, you'll see a little section there under Sunday Alive to fill out a connect card. Let us know how we can be praying for you. Tell us your name. Uh, we have a pretty cool gift for you. So whoa, my voice just went deep. Angelic. Wow. You went yes. deep. I went angelic. All right. All right. I see how it is. Anyway, and then, hey, if you're here with us in person, a way that you connect with us is by stopping by the hub and filling out a connect card, or you can use your app, too, and stay techie. Um, All right. But, That's yeah, we good. have a couple of life groups that you guys can get plugged into. Right, and I'll be telling week. you about that here in just a little bit. Yes. Yes. Okay, guys. So, as you can see, if you've been out here before, we've kind of changed things up this morning. We're trying to get more, more shade for yes. you so we can be... Uh, socially distanced yet together we've also relaunched our kids ministry and some weeks we have a yes. lot of kids and sometimes we have just a few kids but we have a kids mini service that happens during our service right. so if you see kids show up uh, you can go ahead and point them over there to the one kids banner if you are preschool age <laughs> to elementary school age you can hang out there but officially not just in spirit right you got to be right. like under 12 all Right. right, right. So we have activities. They have a lesson. They'll do some games, and we'll keep them in eye shot of their parents. Okay. Woo! I see two kiddos going over there right That's now. That's right. Look at the little babies. All right, hello, baby boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so many boys. I know. I love it. Hey, so coming up in about four weeks, we are going to be having baptisms. So if you have, so exciting, it is so exciting. It's the it's the the thing that the Lord tells us to do right away. Repent and be baptized. So if you've accepted Jesus as your right. Savior and you're starting your walk with the Lord, but maybe you just haven't been baptized yet or you don't understand it, come and talk to me. Sign up on the app in, in the connect section. Yes. We'll put some information in yes. your hand. Or maybe you got baptized a long time ago, but you're feeling the stirring from the Holy Spirit like, man, I need to make a fresh commitment to the Lord through baptism. And I want to demonstrate that. So right. let us know at the hub or let us know on the connect card in the app. And yes. we'll get information like dates and stuff too. And that's also Pastor Tracy's favorite thing to do. That so is. He is it like is super pumped, super amped to yes. see that list It is form. one of the greatest hey. experiences we have at one church is I know. baptisms. We Can I get baptisms. baptized if I just want to get out of the heat? You just want to get out of the heat. <laughs> it's kidding. actually kind of warm this morning. I know. Yeah. All righty. And then, hey, also coming up on October 15th, we have another blood drive. We killed it last time um, the Red Cross came out. What, is that a funny, like, why are you smiling so big? Is no, that a funny pun? We killed it. Am I allowed to say that when well, we're talking about I blood? Don't know when I don't know. Maybe blood. not. We anyway. Have a very good event. <laughs> on October 15th from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. here at our campus, you can donate blood. And this is like such a great way to give back, you guys. Me personally, I'm a little scared of needles. Um, so you, I really had to get talked into it. But if you are just a giver, man, and this is something that you like to do, sign up. Um, you can sign up on the events page yes. and we're, we, we basically send you right over to the Red Cross page right. and there's time slots and it's limited. So I think it's 30 people. Yeah. And we um, already have eight people signed up. Right. So. And last, last time we filled up really quick. People yeah. come out from the community, but we'd like you to be able to participate right. as well. Um, also coming up is the rescheduled men's one night 
right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were supposed to do it the other week, yeah, yeah. the last Friday, but with the smoke from the fires, we had to postpone it. So if you hadn't signed up, now is your chance. October 9th at 6.30 on the Modesto campus lawn. You get a t-shirt. There's going to have some nacho bar. They'll have some cool hangouts. Yeah. And a great speaker will be there that evening. It's 25 bucks for the evening. October 9th, sign up. Bring your young men. Be there. Bring your bring your old men. Bring yourself. Right. Yeah, All right. Exactly. That's the last announcement. And then I do. So I don't know. You guys probably don't know this. So I'll announce it myself. I graduated from something called Next Level Leadership this year. It's a program that we do for our young adults, and actually adults too. Wow. If we just had so many young people in that that class. But yeah, we have a program called Next Level Leadership, and I am officially a graduate, thank God. Um, but it is a program to help you step out into the leadership that you believe God is calling you into. And so guys, seriously, some of the best nine months of my life where I got to hear from leaders, our, our campus leaders, um, just being poured into so this is a huge opportunity and launches october 1st if you need more information come see me stop by the hub and they will come and grab me so i can tell you more about it yes we want to invest in every generation and build up our young adults ourselves our teens our kids to know what it means to love the lord and to serve the lord and the benefits of his grace and his mercy um i also want to celebrate a win this morning our our fall life groups are launching okay if you are not yet signed up for a life group this is your opportunity i have a life group that is actually happening a foundation new believers life group that's going to be happening in the in the uh, office lounge back here right after this service today and we have life groups on prayer and fasting we have life groups uh, for women and for men and there is a variety for young professionals so if you go on your app and under connect you can pull up a full list of all the life groups. You can see who the leaders are and you can plug in there and join a life group because we all need some company, right? Some of us are hanging out in parks. Some of us are hanging out in patios. Uh, but the main thing is we're getting together. We're learning about the Lord. We're building deeper friendships that are centered around Jesus. All right. At this time, I'm going to ask you folks to stand. I'm going to pray over the tithe and the offering. And then I'm going to lead us uh, into worship. I won't lead you in worship, but I will lead you into worship. All right. We're also going to be taking communion this morning. So if I can have my servers uh, come up to the communion tables in just a second, I will invite you uh, to come and receive communion and ask Pastor Tracy to pray over that. Lord, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to come into your presence, God, um, and to bring our gifts to you. Lord, that you have given us, Lord, that we can bring our tithe, Lord, as you have directed us to do, and our offering, Lord God. And Lord, I am grateful that you allow us to be a blessing, Lord, locally and to our missionaries that are serving you in different countries and being a blessing all over the globe through Kingdom Builders, God. So, Lord, whether we're giving online this morning or we're giving at the hub on our way out, Lord, or however, it's mailing in a check, whatever it is we're doing, Lord, we give out of obedience to you, out of faithfulness to you. I ask that you would bless it and multiply it. Do what you want with it, Lord. Bless the gift and bless the giver in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, I'm going to ask Pastor Tracy to come join me. Do you have a mic? Can you come join me? We're going to go uh, into a time of communion this morning. And uh, we have this, our two ladies up here, and they're going to serve you so that we can be healthy. They got gloves on, and they're going to put it into your hands. Pastor Tracy, honey, would you come and would you pray over the communion and lead us into worship? For I receive from the Lord what I also deliver to you. That the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So with us, communion is open communion. You don't have to be a member of the church to receive communion this morning, but you do have to be a member of the body of Christ. 
You have to have that relationship with Jesus. And that's what we ask. So I'm going to pray and we begin to sing. You can come up and they will serve you. We're, we're being COVID safe. We are serving you. Uh, and then you can take it back and you can partake throughout any point of worship uh, as you feel God's leading you this morning. Lord, I thank you today. Lord, I thank you for the sacrifice that you made for each and every one of us. Father, for sending your only son to die on the cross. But not only that, to be beaten, to be mocked. Lord, to take on our sins. Lord, we're so grateful today. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your body that was broken, that brings healing to each one of us. Lord, for the blood that was shed that brings your grace and forgiveness of our sins. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Let me kneel about before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. Sin of the world, his blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before him. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? His plans, promises. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Yeah. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? It out. But who can stop the Lord Almighty? Yeah. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? praise this morning yes Lord we thank you God we praise you God we praise you Lord No. Oh. 
I surrender. I surrender. I surrender all. Oh, yeah. Surrender all to you, Lord. Lord, take control. taking a chance on you I'm, I'm laying things down like when I say Lord I surrender all I'm saying it again as if I'm saying it for the first time down here I say it all the time every Sunday but every Sunday it can be fresh again and every Sunday it can be deeper every time you enter into worship God can take you and freshen you and revive you and heal you and it's part of the surrendering to his awesomeness and recognizing and taking a step of faith that you want to trust him. He knows it's hard. He knows because he knows you. But when we step to him, he comes running, running. We do need to come and say, I surrender, God. We recognize who he is. That's why he created us, is to give him glory, to worship him, and give our lives back to him. And he give us what we need every day. Lord, as we go into our one last song of worship, God, Lord, I pray, God, that by your Holy Spirit, there would come a free Lord, you said that whoever you set free is free indeed. So, Father, I pray that your people would surrender to that freedom this morning. With the precious things and the hard things in your life. Lord, I surrender to you this morning again. Lord, help me to give you my very best every day. And every morning I will come back again. I will surrender again. God. Take me to the deeper places with you. Help me to set my eyes on the heavenly things and not just be distracted by the things of this world. Because you have set me. Oh, I'm free to do 
worship this morning my song we worship you this morning Lord every breath I breathe is an invitation yes, to believe you are creating something good season does and tell my story I know you'll move mountains for me Cause you're just that good Every breath I breathe Every breath I breathe an invitation To believe
out this morning. I'm going to ask as we're singing it out. We put our hand over our heart. Just go ahead and put your hand over your heart this morning as we sing. And we're singing it out, not just because it's words of a song, but we're singing it as an invitation to the Holy Spirit this morning. We tell him, you're welcome here. We're not talking about this place. We're not talking about here outside. We're talking about here. We're telling him, you are welcome. So we sing it out this morning. Your glory, God. To be overcome. for just the voices the sound of heaven as we sing it out we sing and Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, oh. Holy Spirit, have your way. So overcome this fear. Have your way, Lord. Revive this again. Again, yeah. Sing the new songs again. Let's just worship it more. you but in my lifetime I've been to some incredible places with some incredible events concerts with thousands of people promise keepers with a bunch of guys uh, you know I've been in the Holy Land and there's just this incredible but I'll tell you there's one thing that none of that compares to and that's being in the presence of Jesus that's being in the presence and the power of Jesus and the Holy Spirit moving you see, I would take that over any of those any day. Let me get into the presence of Jesus. Because I have found this, that when I enter and I'm in the presence of the Holy Spirit and I'm in the presence of Jesus, my life changes. He changes things. So I just want to encourage you this morning. What is God doing? What is his presence doing in your life? How is it changing you this morning? Lord, I thank you. Wow. Oh. 
Lord, I thank you for the presence and the power of your spirit that changes, changes lives, changed mine. So Lord, today, maybe there's some here that they need you to do a work. And, and today, they were just coming to hopefully step into that presence or, or to be close or, or, or just to, to rub shoulders with somebody, Lord, that's in that presence because they need a breakthrough. And so, Lord, today, you have shown up. Lord, you always show up. And so, Lord, we're thankful for that today. Pray that you would do the work that we need done. In Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. I kind of like our new setup. I like the people are close that we don't have the backsliders sitting in the parking lot on their chairs trying to get the shade from the tree. They got saved. So now this week they're on the pad so they know Jesus. So now it's good. I, I it was getting, we were getting so far back. I thought some people were going to be out by the fence line sitting in their chairs I get it. Cars, you're good. I love you. Appreciate you. Give me a honk. Well, those are some weak horns, man. We got to get some. Yeah, all right, all right. Um, but uh, we're so glad. It just is nice to have people right here in front of me. Uh, so, hey, this morning we're going to kick off a new series called The Armor of God. We're kicking it off at all of our campuses right now. Um, we were in this series uh, called Church in the City, and there was one more week. There was a week eight that we didn't get to, but here's what we did. We are so technology savvy that we posted it on the Facebook from one of our other campuses. So you can go watch week eight um, and get that final week of the, the Church in the City series. Uh, it was a great series. I really enjoyed it. Um, but today we're kicking off this new series called The Armor of God. And yes, we are still in the book of Ephesians. So uh, it's just the way it worked. And we've been praying about this series, um, working through this series uh, for quite some time now. So uh, again, um, I, I love what Paul did in the book of Ephesians and how he encourages and he instruct the church, he instructed the church on, on how to be the church individually and corporately as the body of Christ. Um, and then he gets to the end of Ephesians and this is how he ends Ephesians with this, this teaching about the being battle ready getting ready for the battle. He's like, okay, I've taught you. I've encouraged you. This is how you're to be the church. You guys need to be the church. You are the church. And now I'm going to tell you how to be equipped to go into battle as the church. And so that's where we, we come today in Ephesians chapter six. Uh, you can follow along. Should have some notes on your app. Uh, thank you, Jacob. And, uh, Audrey for getting those there. You can follow along, but we're going to be in verse 10 of chapter six says this, finally, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities and against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Another version says, after you've done everything, Stand firm. Stand firm. What Paul is saying is that being the church, individually or corporately, and the, the relationships that we are engaged in and that we are interacting in with people, we need to understand that we are in a spiritual battle. And we will be attacked by the enemy. He will come against us at some point. He starts this section off. Now, you know, I love that, that word. He starts this off, finally. Right? Have you ever been in a conversation, maybe as a, as a kid, as a teenager, and you're in a conversation with your parents, and then they go, now finally, 
Like, that's when you start waking up and you're actually now paying attention. They finally got to the end, right? They, they're getting to the good part. You know, finally, oh, well, finally, you're about ready to wrap this conversation up. All right? But he says, finally. Why does Paul say that? He, he's emphasizing that, hey, this is important. Right here, what I'm about to tell you is important, so pay attention. Finally. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. I think uh, the church church in America, our, our, our church culture in America, we don't, we don't talk about this idea of the spiritual world as much. Maybe it's because as pastors, we're afraid of how people might react or they might get scared or, you know, new people that are coming. Oh, we don't want to get too super spiritual on them and, and they might they might get afraid. Um, but but the, the problem with that is, is that there is a spiritual battle going on. And just because we don't recognize it or we're not aware of it 